we're really excited to make sure that these issues are at the forefront uh, of what our government is prioritizing, what corporations are prioritizing for their employees. And we just need to prioritize moms right now. I mean, a big part of this that we're talking about is working class women, black and Latino women who have been pushed out of the service industry sector simply because the, those jobs in this moment no longer exist. I think the hope is that those jobs are going to come back online. There still is the reality of what those women have lost in this period where they have been unemployed, what this has meant for them. There's also the question of women, upper income women, who've also been forced out of the workforce because they are either providing care for their children, providing care for a loved one. How much of this actually needs to be a public-private partnership and how much of this can be answered simply by the government? Well, this is the smartest investment that we can make right now, whether it's companies providing better policies for their employees or whether it's the federal government working with local government to make sure that we're giving the tools and resources that our moms need. We all know that many essential workers are women from the Black, Latino and Asian communities. And we need to make sure that they are able to survive and to thrive and get back on their feet. So many of them have either not had the luxury of being able to quarantine or as they are home taking care of their kids, they're also taking care of their relatives, the elderly, the sick, their community members. And so we need to make sure that we're providing the tools that they need to be able to um, survive and take care of their families, whether that's paid leave, whether that's universal child care. Uh, Congressman, you and I first connected on Twitter after we did a segment on this show about a rise in anti-Asian hate crimes, those crimes up 800 percent in New York City alone. You've now reintroduced your resolution denouncing anti-Asian sentiments that have risen during the coronavirus outbreak. I wonder what more needs to be done on the federal and local level to address this crisis. Sure. And I want to thank you, Alicia and MSNBC. You are one of the first mainstream media networks to even talk about this issue, which has been um, we have seen uh, our Asian American community hurting over the past year, not just from the virus, but this virus of discrimination. We have legislation, uh, a resolution condemning anti-Asian bigotry that was passed in the House under Speaker Pelosi and Steny Hoyer and Jim Clyburn, um, but also that President Joe Biden signed uh, into law just a week ago. We're still working on legislation. We need more resources and dedicated personnel at the Department of Justice to be able to work with our local communities to ensure easier and more accurate reporting of these hate incidents and hate crimes. And Mostly, we need to make sure that we are not pitting any community against each other. The answer to racism is never more racism. It is solidarity. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.